Hale is on the ground there to see this damage for himself. So, Riley, we're talking about an EF2 tornado. Any surprises with that classification based on what you've seen? Uh, no surprises whatsoever, Richard, uh, based on what I've seen out here. And I was actually just talking with one of the property owners uh, for this particular parcel, and I was talking with him, and I was asking him, so it was this your building? And he was like, no, this, this building wasn't over here. This is the building that was across the street that got ripped off and traveled across the road and just landed right here. To give you some perspective, so this is not where this building used to be. This building was most likely at least 250 yards uh, across the street. You can see a giant pine tree right here that was snapped in half and that's laying it into destruction right here. Uh, this is the big thing. You're seeing just debris everywhere. You're seeing little pieces of wood, um, little pieces of shingles. Um, take a look at this. This is just a big piece of, uh, of sheet metal and I mean it is just wrapped around and that's, that's this is a sturdy piece of metal and it just completely folded it like a piece of paper around that tree. Um, other thing down power lines. We have a lot of power companies here uh, trying to restore power, install new power poles. We have a lot of uh, community support all from around South Carolina. We actually have Hilton Head. Uh, they sent some emergency crews to help with the rescue or the with the um, uh, cleanup efforts here. Uh, these power lines, they're not live. We have been assured of that, but this is a, this is just the scene for a large swath around downtown Bamberg. We are in downtown Bamberg earlier today, and this is just a, a few uh, blocks away from the, uh, the downtown area, but this is where we have seen the worst of the damage. We were, I was talking with the lead forecaster at the National Weather Service earlier today, and he was saying that right here at the Oak and Barrel Company, this is where they have seen the worst damage, and this is where they did confirm that it was an EF2 with max winds up to 125 miles per hour. And the width of this uh, tornado at its maximum was three to 400 yards wide. And you can just see that type of swath that goes all the way to the downtown area and continues even uh, northeast of downtown. When I was also talking to um, the lead forecaster from the Weather Service in Columbia, we were talking about how the radar looked once the storm was passing through. It didn't necessarily have the classic uh, couplet or tornadic vor vortex signature that you usually see in radar. Um, the system was just moving so fast and you could really see the velocity signature that it was showing really fast winds. You just didn't necessarily see the rotation as well and there wasn't a debris signature with it. So uh, one of the variables we used on radar correlation coefficient that helps us see if there's any debris aloft into the sky. We didn't see that signature. Usually with these type tornadoes, whenever they get to that rating of EF2 or higher, uh, it creates a very clear debris signature on radar that we can see. So it's surprising we didn't have that yesterday, uh, but this was a tornado worn cell. I've been talking with a couple of people around here today, and um, they, they were saying that they were watching our broadcast. And right when we said, hey, downtown Bamberg, getting to your safe spot, uh, that's when they sought cover and then they came out to see, obviously, what was left in its path. But um, it's, uh, it's, it really hits you just seeing this kind of firsthand that um, you see things on radar and then to, um, you know it's gonna be bad, you know what that signature on radar is gonna correlate to ground level, but uh, to just be here kind of walking around, just seeing debris everywhere, people out and about helping uh, their neighbors just help clean it up. Um, obviously very bad, a lot of destruction, but it is good to see the community support um, coming together for this, Richard. And Riley, briefly, back to that pile of debris behind you. I mean, that's amazing perspective to think all of that was actually a building across the street. Can you imagine how dangerous it is to be outside with that kind of stuff flying around? I know it, Richard, and I was talking with uh, this particular property owner who talked to the uh, the gentleman that was actually in the building over there, and he was in there while it happened, and he said he just went out and looked up and saw everything and just could not believe uh, that he just lived through that storm passing him by. And, uh, that was the building where half of it is now over here, and uh, when the building hit, that's obviously probably what knocked that uh, pine tree in half. And then what's also interesting, I'm not sure if we can get a, a close-up of the water tower, Hector. So this is uh, 
uh, Bamberg's water tower, you can see a lot of the debris still kind of in the rafters up there. And then they actually think that part of this structure that we're looking at actually kind of slammed into the water tank and may have caused some damage. So they're gonna have to assess that a little bit more over the next couple of days. Um, but uh, yeah, Richard, when I, when I was talking to the property owner and he was saying that, no, this isn't a building that was here. This is the building from across the street. Mm -hmm. It just, it, it blew my mind. I, I couldn't believe it. No doubt about it. And thanks for pushing in closer on that water tower. I had no idea such a heavy structure like that was also damaged in this. A lot of structural questions around town and a couple of blocks away, I'm sure they're looking at all those historic buildings downtown because Riley, some of them may have to come down. They may not be safe anymore. And that's going to be the thing that they mentioned, or that's another thing they mentioned in the press conference today, Richard, is that it's tough for them to start the cleanup process because the structural integrity of the building uh, is it's leaning over. So they can't go clean up the bricks around the downtown uh, uh, Main Street area because that building's still leaning over. So fire crews are going to have to go out there, uh, fix the structural integrity of the building before they can kind of clear out the street where a lot of that debris is still uh, out there. So in the downtown area, they definitely have that situation. Many areas across town are having a similar fate. So it's going to take a while to, uh, to pick up uh, a lot of this mess because there, there is a lot to pick up. This was a place that was hit very hard. Chief Meteorologist Riley Hale on the ground for us today in Bamberg. And Riley will check in a little later.